12.8 volts. 4,100, about 4,200 RPM. You may recognize these mountains behind me. Anyone from Alberta, do you recognize Banded Peak, Heart Mountain, Mount Yamnuska? I'm in a bathroom in Australia at the moment, so there's a little taste of home. This is the stock impeller on this pump, and it is an open face, as you can see. Basically, that means that this just presses up against the piece of plastic that goes over the top here, and there's a little gap between the impeller and that plastic. Right in the middle here, there's a low pressure zone, and right at the edge here, that is the high pressure zone. That high pressure water is gonna to try to follow that gap back to the middle, and you sort of get a recirculating effect, which is why the closed impeller is supposed to be more efficient. Not only is this more efficient, but what I can do with the 3D printer is I can print different diameters, different angles on the actual impeller blades themselves. You can see this is quite a well-engineered little pump here. And the other thing that I've done is from where this hub is, this is dropped down three millimeters and I have kept this hub and this, um, I guess like the housing over the closed impeller, figure out that word later, but this is three millimeters down as well. So it's gonna press up against the same piece of plastic, but I've dropped the entire impeller down. So if you look through this hole, you can't actually see the impeller, it's, it's a little high. Whereas when I remove the stock impeller and I put on this 3D printed one, the top is at the same position, but the impeller itself, you can actually see it through that hole now. So it's more aligned with where it's supposed to be. The next step would to actually be to build like a nice little snail shell volute around this to make it even more efficient. That's after I test impellers. My theory is that this should draw about the same amount of wattage as that, just maybe be slightly more efficient. And I have another impeller here, side by side. The total diameter of this is much larger, so I should be able to get a higher pressure out of it but these little slots are thinner than those slots. So I'm actually pumping less water, but at a higher pressure, hopefully, so I don't burn out this motor. I have no idea if my software calculations are actually going to be reality here. So I'm just gonna quickly test this out and see if there's any noticeable difference with the amps drawn. 12.8 volts, 6.6 .6 amps, 84 watts. Puzzle off, let's move up to 12.8 volts. that 92 watts. Even this two meter length of hose creates a slight bit of resistance. So just to be completely consistent, I want an open number with just the pump by itself. This is the screen I'm reading. So I can adjust the voltage, the amperage up to 10 amps, and then it reads the wattage that this system is using. This is my coarse voltage, and this knob right below is the fine voltage, so I can perfectly dial it in. So seven amp, 90 watts with the pump just wide open, nothing to it. Here's the stock impeller, and this impeller, it's got the nice blades shaped up and everything. I've got it set up to be as close as I can predict, the same performance as this, just hopefully more efficient. And then the next test, this one has a narrower edge here, so less water is flowing out than this one, but it's a larger diameter, so I should get higher pressure and I'm sort of gonna test those two side by side. So I've got the low pressure, it's supposed to be the same as this, just more efficient, Let's see how it goes. Skip ahead to an eight mil nozzle here. That looked like more flow for sure. So with this Nuzamis pump, and the five millimeter nozzle, last time I was at 5.9 amps, 77 watts. That's pretty unreal. So my pump software got this pretty much bang on the equivalent of what this original was. Um, on that one, but it seemed like that was pushing a lot more water. 
purely subjectively at this point. So that is why I'm doing this quick video with the bathtub and I, I've ordered a, a flow meter. I mean, I could just time this filling a bucket and everything, but I've got a bit better setup that I'm going to do in the backyard in the sunlight over the next few days here. So the 3D printed impeller that's in the pump right now, its target was five meters of head pressure and 30 GPM, which is exactly what the advertising said for this. Uh, I'm gonna get this spraying so we can see side by side, and then we're gonna come right back to the same five mil nozzle, but this impeller is supposed to give us 11 meters of head pressure at 14 GPM. It was the largest diameter impeller I could fit within the volume of this bilge pump. Curious how this is gonna work out. We were right up to nine amps there, so we were pulling more power. That was a significant little jet of water. You know, I'm just subjectively saying that, but we'll get the side-by-side -side video footage of that at least. So far, so good. That's all I have for you folks. We've compared the open stock impeller to several closed impellers. All sorts of fanciness. I can 3D print these a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller to dial everything in, but I just wanted to see if I was going in the right direction, and it does appear that there is some low-hanging fruit as far as efficiency goes and impeller options. In the future, uh, hopefully the production value will be a little bit higher than me playing around in my bathroom, but I hope you enjoy my beautiful tiles here in the background, and uh, yeah, I've got a flow meter coming up, so I'll be able to see what the actual flow is with different jets. And I've got a pressure gauge. I've even got a vacuum gauge for once I get into dredge nozzles and everything, we can test the different vacuums out. But initially what I wanna do is I wanna get an impeller that seems to be working well and basically do the whole pump chart. So I test it with a, a variety of different nozzle sizes and get the flow rate at each one, as well as the total wattage required at each one and then just compare impeller to impeller to impeller for a little bit until I get that dialed in. Then I can go with, say, my two favorite impellers and use different impellers for different dredge venturis to sort of see what we can do as far as efficiency is concerned. The overall idea of this project, for anyone who's wondering what's going on, it's partly that you might be able to make a better electric dredge with a you know, higher pressure, low flow bilge pump but it's also, I want to get some data for, let's say you build the ultimate fine gold subsurface dredge for Nome, Alaska. I want to know what the plumbing numbers are, essentially. How much power am I going to need for whatever I come up with? And I'll be able to test different venturis, subsurface dredges, surface dredges, different flares, all sorts of different things, and get a very accurate idea of sort of how much wattage, how many horsepower if you scaled everything up it'll actually take to run that system. So got a long way to go. I just wanted to throw a quick update at you guys because I know I haven't really uh, been following through with this. It's taken a while to learn how to actually make these things and, you know, my little adventure in 3D printing here. So we'll see you in the next video with a bit more detail, but I hope this was a little bit helpful and uh, not helpful yet, but interesting. I hope this was interesting. Till next time, cheers and thank you for watching, everybody.